Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of How Commands Work. Today we are going to be learning about the fill command. So in order to use the fill command, you're going to need a starting point and an ending point. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm talking, of course, about coordinates. So if I want to fill, let's say, this region here, I'm going to, uh, okay, I want to fill from this point right here all the way to this point right here. Actually, let's go up a bit. Let's go right here. So in order to do that, you can press F3 and over here it says what block you are looking at. So I can type fill 15259 negative 41 and then press enter. And then I can move over here, press T or whatever your torque key is and then up and then I can type in as it says here, 13656 negative 41, and then I can type in whatever material I want to fill it with. So let's say glass. And as you can see, it does that. However, as I've explained in a tips and tricks video, this is quite time consuming. So you can easily just go forward slash fill, space tab, space tab, space tab, press enter, and then go over here, and then press T, and then up, and then go space tab, space tab, space tab, and then space whatever block you want to fill with. So let's go stone, for instance. So in case you want relative commands, now what does relative mean? It means the command will execute relative to where the command block is. So if I look here, this is called a tilde, and you can do it by pressing shift, and then on the very left-hand side of the keyboard, um, there will be a symbol that kind of looks like this, and you press that. So what does this mean? It means I want to fill one in the positive x direction all the way to 10 in the positive x direction with stone. Which way is positive x? Well, according to my F3 screen, it's this way. So when we activate this command, it's going to fill this area with stone in the positive x direction. Now, if I increased this second number here, like say 15, and then did that, it's going to add more to the end of the command. Now, here, I've added a 1 on the end of the command. Now this is going to fill all this sand with granite. Now how did I know that this would create granite? Well, if you hover over here, it doesn't tell you a lot of information. So, if I exit out of there, press F3 and H at the same time, my advanced tooltips are going to be shown. So if I press E now and hover over that, you can see a, a bit of information. At the bottom in the grey text, it says Minecraft Stone. And that last number on the end is its damage value. And that's important because if the damage value was, say, here, 2, then the granite will be polished instead, which is very, very important. Furthermore, we can extend onto this command so it replaces a certain block. So it's the same command except I've added the word replace and wool. So when I activate this command, it's only going to replace the wool with granite. As you can see, the sand is untouched. Now, what if I wanted to replace a specific wool? What if I only wanted to replace the red wool, for instance? Well, I have added the number 14 on the end. How did I know to do 14? Well, if I grab this red wool with my pick block button, you can see on the end it says 14, and that's how I know what number I should use on the end. So let's run the command, and as you can see, it only replaces the red wool. There is another word that I can add instead of replace on the end. It's the word keep. Now this basically means replace air. And so that's just a simple way of writing replace air instead. On this command block, it says destroy at the end of the command. Now if you haven't guessed already, instead of just neatly replacing the sand, it actually destroys it. Now if I had tile drops enabled, then that would have dropped all the sand entity items. And of course, those tags don't just stop there. Let's do the fill command yet again. So let's fill from here to here with glass. All right, let's type in glass zero. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to type in the word outline. So what it actually has done now, it's created a hollow area, but it saved the diamonds in between. So now if I go glass zero hollow, it's just going to hollow out whatever is in the middle. So that is everything you need to know about the fill command, besides the fact that there's one limit. And if you go too extreme with the fill command, let's go negative a million, negative a million, negative, like, 
a huge command. Don't expect it to work. It's going to say, okay, so first of all, you can't do a fill command under the earth. And the second thing is that you cannot choose numbers that are too big, otherwise it won't work. See, too many blocks in specified area, so there is a limit. If you want to know how to break this limit, I've linked a video in the description about how to break the limits of the fill command. But, that's all I have for you this episode. If there's anything that you're confused about or don't think I covered very well, please let me know in the comments and I will clarify anything you need to know. Also, I'd like to know what commands you are keen to learn in the next episode. But for now, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.